Hello there, I'm Alex Hellenberg and I'm an experienced facilitator at the Reed Center here at EDPL Central Branch. And this is going to be part of our second Saturday story time here in February. Now, normally we would be doing this at the airport, but since, you know, we're still having some rough times, uh, we're going to actually record this here at the EVPL Central Branch, here in the River Room. So you can see we got the colorful flags and it says read along the wall here. So I got some really colorful things going on around me here, just to kind of liven it up a little bit. But I thought with my first book, considering we couldn't be at the airport, but I still want to keep with the theme of airplanes, I thought my first book would be The Little Airplane. And see how small that book is? Look at it, it's so tiny. So as you open it up, it opens up to a red view of what looks like some farmhouses, uh, there's a fence there, some trees, and there's a little airplane just flying above, and we can see the pilot looking down at everything. So yeah, it looks a little interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. And then as we turn the page, you can see the top view of what the plane looks like and its parts. So you have the propeller in the front, it's the thing that spins on the front there. The aileron, looks like that's what keeps the wings balanced so you're not going crazy. <laughs> and then it looks like an elevator is on the back there, so you can see the back there to keep it all balanced and leveled as you're flying high in the sky. And then there's a rudder right there in the middle. That kind of gives you an idea as to what plane we're going to be talking about little airplane. Pilot Small has a little airplane. He keeps it in the hangar at the airport. So there's Pilot Small. We got what's called Tiny Town Airport there. Okay, he's got a little red car behind him. It is a fine sunny day. Pilot Small and the mechanic roll the airplane out of the hangar. Pilot Small decides to go up. They look to the motor over, they look the motor over carefully. They fill the tanks with gas. So look at them. Looks like we got a mechanic up there and he's fixing on the wing there. And then we got pilot small, he's working on the propeller. Oh, it looks like the gas is being uh, distributed inside the plane there actually. So yeah, just making sure everything's good. All is ready for the takeoff. Pilot Small climbs into the cockpit and sits down. He fastens his safety belt. He looks round on all sides to make sure the field is clear. So there he goes. He's going to get inside the airplane. Pilot Small pumps the throttle a few times to prime the engine. The mechanic winds the propeller until the gas gets into the motor. Then he calls, contact! Pilot Small turns on the switch and answers, contact, to make sure everything's good. The mechanic pulls the propeller through and it starts whizzing. The engine starts with a loud roar. So look at that. We're going to be taken off here. Pilot Small races the engine a few times. It roars loudly. He releases the brake. He looks at the wind indicator to see which way the wind is blowing. He taxis to the end of the field in order to bring the plane round into the wind. He keeps the stick back to raise the elevators. Remember, the elevators are on the back there. The wind pressure on them keeps the plane down. Okay, so that's what it does. Again, it levels it all out just to make sure we're safe because <laughs> you never know how powerful those winds could be up there. So it looks like, yeah, we're getting ready to take off still. Okay. Now he is ready for takeoff. The motor is warmed up. He allows the stick to go forward gradually until the tail skid lifts. When the flying speed is reached, he pulls back gently on the stick. This raises the elevators and lifts the plane off the ground. The plane climbs steeply into the wind. So there we go. See, he's getting all the controls going and making sure everything's steady. Ooh, seems a little little intense. The little airplane rises in the air. Pilot Small looks down and watches the ground slip away beneath him. 
He keeps one hand on the gas. So there he is. He's checking out the ground there, just like in the, the beginning of the book there. Up and up the little airplane goes until it reaches a height of 2,000 feet. That's pretty high. Pilot Small pushes the stick halfway forward into neutral to level off. The plane flies along smoothly. So there it goes. It's going smoothly. Maybe you can put your hands out. Can you all stretch out your arms and act like, the, act like a plane just gliding smoothly through the air? There we go. Sure, you can do some propeller sounds if you'd like. Maybe like a with your lips. Can you do that with your lips? Like a Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Ooh. Pilot Small decides to make a right turn. He pushes the stick to the right. This lowers the aile it's an aileron on the left wing and raises the aileron on the right wing. At the same time, he presses on the rudder bar with his right foot, turning the rudder to the right. The plane banks as it turns to the right. Then he straightens the rudder and puts the stick back to neutral to come out of the turn. He continues on a straight course. A lot of things to do when flying a plane, isn't it? Yeah. There's all kinds of words and terms to know. But then again, it doesn't look easy flying a plane. <laughs> the little airplane flies over a large lake. It hits the air pocket and drops 30 feet. The jolt gives Pilot Small an empty feeling in his stomach, but he does not mind. He flies low over the lake. He peeps out and sees his little sailboat rocking at anchor beneath him. He speeds up his motor and the little airplane climbs again. <laughs> so there he goes. He sees his little boat out, out on the lake there. Yeah. The little airplane flies over a town. Pilot Small sees the people walking about like little ants on the streets below. Look at them. They do look like little ants. Gosh. He is so high up. Look at all the colorful buildings and whatnot. The little airplane climbs higher and higher. It climbs up through open holes in the clouds towards the blue sky above. It flies above the clouds. Pilot Small likes this the best of all. He sees the clouds like layers and layers of cotton beneath him. It is a very beautiful sight. <laughs> Look at that. Wouldn't that be beautiful to see? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Ooh. The little airplane glides down through the clouds. It sinks gently through the foggy, dry mist. Now it is below the clouds. Pilot Small sees the ground appear again beneath him. He's getting closer and closer down to the ground. Woo! Look at that. <laughs> Pilot Small decides to do a loop. He pushes the throttle wide open to gain speed. He puts the stick forward to put the nose down. He pulls back on the stick gradually. The little airplane dives first, then climbs up sharply, turns over, and comes back to its first position. Pilot Small is pushed down into the seat. He gasps for his breath, then gives a chuckle. He feels very proud of himself. He does another loop just for fun. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my. That looks crazy, doesn't it? Look at that. Just then, the engine begins to sputter. Chugga, 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 chugga. It stops dead. Ooh, uh oh. The gas line is clogged. The little airplane glides and begins to sink slowly. Pilot Small looks worried. Uh-oh, I don't know about that. Look at that. Ooh, okay. Pilot Small looks for a safe landing space. He sees an open field at the edge of a dense forest. Perhaps it is a swamp. Perhaps it is full of rocks and stones. He hopes not, for he will have to make a forced landing. Ooh, let's hope he, he lands safe, right? Let's hope it's not a swamp or rocks or stones, anything dangerous. The little airplane glides to the ground. 
It lands safely in a grassy field. Well, that's good. Pilot Small climbs out of the cockpit. He takes tools from his toolbox. He fixes the gas line, and his motor begins to hum once more. What a relief! Pilot Small smiles broadly. He takes off again. Away goes the little airplane. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good that, yeah, that he definitely made a, made a safe landing. It is growing late. Pilot Small banks again to return. He flies back to the airport. He flies low over his home. He sees his fields, his house, and his garage. Circling above the airport, he sees his little Otto waiting for him beside the hangar. <laughs> See, there's his little car, Otto. See it there by the airport? The flight is over. Pilot Small decides to land. He circles to the right of the field. He looks at the wind indicator to see which way the wind is blowing. He decides on a point on the field that he wishes to hit and keeps his eye on it. He throttles his motor down to lose speed. He glides down against the wind. There he goes. He's gliding downward very slowly. As he comes close to the ground, he pulls the stick back to level off. The little airplane drops to the ground. It makes a perfect three-point landing. There we go. The two wheels and the tall skid hit the ground at the same moment. So look, he did all right. Good deal. And he's got his friend there, the mechanic, coming over to help him. Make sure everything's good. Pilot Small sets one brake and turns around. He taxis, bumpity bump, to the hangar. He shuts off the motor, the propeller stops. He opens the door of the cockpit and steps out. <laughs> Pilot Small and the mechanic roll the little airplane into the hangar. Pilot Small jumps into his little auto and drives off. So there he goes. He had a great time flying in the air. Now he's like, whew, it's time to drive back home. And that's all about Pilot Small. Look at him. <laughs> all right. The end. All right. So after that, we're going to go ahead and do a little song called Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Can you do that with your hands? Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. All right. Let's begin. We go. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Now here's the fun part. We're going to count down, then we're going to lift off. So we go five, four, three, two, one, then blast off! And then we just soar through the air. Remember the airplane wings? Or you could be a rocket. You could do this and fly through space. Go be like an astronaut in space and a rocket. Isn't that fun? We see all the planets. And then we go back down. All right, now that was pretty fun, wasn't it? <laughs> so now I got another story to show you, and this one's a pretty fun book. And it's called Shea Bob. And that's Shea, C-H-E-Z, so the Z is silent. And it's in French, like Chef Bob, but Shea Bob. And it looks like he's an alligator there, and he's sprinkling some salt on what looks like a little bird who's sprinkling salt on a little little thing for him to eat. <laughs> so this should be a fun book. Let's check it out. Look at all the birds there, colorful birds. You got purple, blue, some pink birds. <laughs> and this one says for Shay Tom and Shay Dave, Shay Bob by Bob Shia. Here we go. Bob worked very hard at being lazy. Being lazy is making me very hungry, said Bob to no one. 
Maybe if I ask nicely, a bird will fly into my mouth and down into my belly. <laughs> so look at him there. He's getting hungry, and he's looking at all the birds flying over. <laughs> and there he goes. He's about to snatch a one. Hey, birds, fly in here, please. Thank you. But they fly off, scared to be eaten by Shay Bob. No, but I said please and thank you. Well, he did, said Bob. Lucky grass, I wish I had seeds on me. Then I'd have all the birds I want. And look at him over there eating on the grass. Wait, that's it. He's got a plan. Ooh, look at him. He goes, I will open a bird seed restaurant on my nose. Birds will come to eat, but I will eat the birds. I will sell my super smart idea to the other lazy alligators. I will be rich and famous and great. <laughs> Look at him. And he's going to open up a restaurant called Shea Bob. I will have diamond teeth and a solid gold hat. I will be full of yummy, yummy birds. Bob opens Shea Bob the very next day. So look at him. He's thinking he's going to get all rich and he's got diamonds in his mouth and money bags all over. Here he goes. Welcome to Shea Bob, which is a real restaurant and not a trick. <laughs> or so they think. Let's see. I will have the bird seed, said the bird, pointing his wing at the only thing on the menu. Good choice, said Bob. Bob seasoned his seed with all of his favorite spices so his customers would taste extra yummy. <laughs> See the menu there, and you got the bird. Delicious, said the bird. I will tell all my friends. Oh, then I will not eat you, said Bob. What, said the bird. I said, so nice to meet you, said Bob and he couldn't wait to meet the bird's tasty friends. Soon Shea Bob was the talk of the trees. Birds flew in from all over the world to eat on Bob's face. <laughs> look at them all, and look at him. He's pretty happy. His plan's working. It wasn't long before a little town sprang up around Shea Bob. Look at all this. You got a roller coaster, looks like a little lake, and the birds are swimming in the lake, a playground little track that goes around the town. It's getting crazy. The birds built a school, a library, a little park, and an extensive public transportation system. That's weird since birds can fly, thought Bob. That is pretty weird. Why would they need that? As a small business owner, Bob wanted to be part of the community. He coached the basketball team. It's rewarding to be a positive role model for the birds I'm going to eat, thought Bob. So look at him. Since he was new in town, Bob joined a book club to meet some like-minded birds. He hit it off with everyone except the orange bird who never let anyone else talk. How rude, thought Bob. I'm totally going to eat him first. <laughs> yeah. Bob treated his best customers to a sunset dinner cruise to thank them for their patronage. If it weren't for these birds I'm going to eat, I'd be out of business, thought Bob. So look at them all, man. They're having it made, and look at him. He looks like he's having a good time, too. But again, he wants to eat them. <laughs> and then he goes, that night, the birds stayed up way past their bedtime chirping about the fun they had with Bob all day. They look so cozy and warm together, thought Bob. Maybe the birds I'm going to eat will invite me for a sleepover sometime. Bob imagined a sad, lonely song in his head as he tried to fall asleep all by himself. Maybe I should get a cat to snuggle with or snack on, he thought. <laughs> So look at all the birds partying without him. And he's looking sad. Aww. The next morning, 
Bob was excited to see the birds. Hey guys, I went for a walk this morning and picked some pretty flowers for your nests. Oh, and guess what? I think I saw a turtle. Cool, right? <laughs> and here comes all the birds flying in. But before they got to hear more about the cool turtle, the sky turned dark and, uh-oh, what's gonna happen? Kira! Oh my goodness! A storm, shouted Bob. Quick, everyone fly into my mouth for safety. The startled little birds swarmed into Bob's gaping jaws to escape the storm. So there they go. See how the rain's coming down? Oh, no. And here it is. He goes, now is my chance to eat the birds, thought Bob. I cannot wait to see the looks on their beaks when they check out my diamond teeth and solid gold hat. They will be jealous and amazed. <laughs> there he is. He's, he's got them all in his mouth. But the little birds would not see Bob's hat or teeth. All the little birds would be inside Bob's belly. Bob looked around at the quiet, empty town. A solid gold hat seemed kind of silly now. Diamond teeth didn't seem so cool anymore. Bob could hear the birds in his mouth, laughing, playing, and cleaning his teeth. Bob knew what he had to do. So look at him. He's getting, he seems a little happier and he's like, and he opens his mouth and he's like, yay, Bob saved us, cheered the birds that Bob probably was not going to eat. <laughs> I don't think hero is a strong enough word, do you? Asked Bob. And a hero deserves a super secret hero surprise, said a bird who was very excited. Follow us. So there they go. Ooh, what do we got? Look at this. It goes, they go, we've been working on a bob-sized nest especially for you, said a bird who was good at keeping secrets. <laughs> now we can be together always, said a bird with a big heart. Oh my gosh, you are, you all are so sweet. And I should know, since I just spit you out, said Bob to the birds, as he was absolutely, without a doubt, definitely not going to eat them. <laughs> And look at that, it says, welcome, Bob, and he's chilling out there, and look, they're all together, all happy and having fun. Oh, and the end. Look at that. There he goes, he's on a bike. They're also on some little bikes. And that is Shay Bob. What a fun book that was, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, I have one more little exercise we can do. It's a really fun one, and it's a classic in my opinion. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so this one is called head, shoulders, knees, and then toes. So you gotta go all the way down and touch your toes, okay? Wanna try it with me? Here we go. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Then we go, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. All right, want to try it again? Let's go a little faster this time. Let's try it. We go, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. You wanna go faster? I think we should go really fast. Let's try it. Okay, here we go. We go, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. <laughs> that one's always a fun one, isn't it? All right. I know I had fun. Well, and that concludes our second Saturday Story video. I thank you all for watching, and I hope you had a great time, because I know I definitely did. So keep checking out on YouTube for EVPL videos. We'll always have something new to see there. And check out our programs. There's so much to explore at all of our branches. All right. I'll see you later.